Hello, horror fiends, and welcome to Guess What? You're Wrong, the podcast where we dive into all things horror and spoil the hell out of every movie we discuss. With me, Big D, as your host, be prepared for a terrifyingly good time. From classic slasher flicks to contemporary horror masterpieces, we're going to explore the genre from every angle that we can and leave no stone unturned. Horror, Prince, and Shine. New conversations, same podcast. So buckle up, Bonehead, because you're going for a ride. Enjoy the show! Now, before we get into this episode too far, I just got a little disclaimer here. First off, all audio used in this podcast is used under the protection of fair use. And as with all the movie reviews that I do here on Guess What? You're Wrong. We're going to spoil the hell out of every single thing we talk about. So, you have been warned. People once believed that when someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes, just sometimes, the crow could bring that soul back to put the wrong things right. You're all going to die. Is that gasoline I smell? <laughs> Victims, aren't we all? Hello, and welcome back to another Corvus Racchio Nacho inspired episode of Guess What? You're Wrong. Now, I don't know if I pronounced that correctly, but if I didn't, fuck y'all. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Corvus Racchio Nachos, Racchio Ranchos. I don't know. That is actually <laughs> the scientific name for the American Crow. Is it? It's the scientific name for the American Crow. Now, we are actually covering, from 1994, a classic, The Crow, with Brandon Lee. Now, before we get too far into this, I got to get... First off, I got to say that Christine is joining me, because this is also one of her favorite movies. What's up, yes. Christine? What's up? What's up? What's up? How long are you going to let your beard grow for? My beard? <laughs> <laughs> the Crow from 1994. Now, before we dive into it, let's go over some. The director was Alex Proyas. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. Yeah. Um, the writers, James O'Barr, J. O'Barr, David Show, and John Shirley. And we all know that J. O'Barr was the creator of The Crow, created the comic book The Crow. Mm-hmm. We'll go more into that in a little bit. Um, this movie stars Brandon Lee as Eric Draven. Legendary. I mean, th- this... This movie made his name known. Yes. Worldwide. I mean, he was already known because of his dad, his dad, Bruce Lee, right? But he actually stepped out of the shadow of his father when he did this movie. Absolutely, he did. He did. And this has to be... Uh, he, he did other movies before this. Mm-hmm. Um, small, small little part there. But this has to be by far... The, the epitome movie that he had ever done. I mean, it, it was um, what Brandon Lee was in all his gloriousness. It was spectacular, is all I can say. Yes. Uh, do you remember the first time you saw this movie? Yeah. I didn't go to the movie theaters. I no. watched it at home. Oh, man. I'm sorry. 1994, I was living in Florida, Gainesville, Florida. I remember going to see this movie. I was in Florida, too. Oh, yeah? Where in but Florida? in 1994, I was only 14. <laughs> You're young. I am not that young. I remember going to see this. You know, when I lived in Florida, I was going to the University of Florida, and you know, I went to what's that name of that? It was a, a junior college there too. I don't remember. Santa Fe Community College. I went there part time, and I went to University of Florida part time. Mm-hmm. When this movie came out, I was living in an apartment with a bunch of frat people. Mm-hmm. They didn't want to go see it. Fuck y'all. I'm going to see it. <laughs> and I went and saw it by myself. I don't care. Um, 
or your middle finger. So. It is. Back then, I probably didn't do it, but now I don't care anymore. But you know, but uh, this movie, from the first time I saw it, had such a huge impact on me. I remember yeah. before I left Finley, Ohio, I had a good buddy of mine. Um, that uh, we used to hang out at the Dunkin' Donuts and drink coffee and smoke cigarettes. So this was back in Dunkin' Donuts. It was cool when it was locally owned. Yeah. Uh, but uh, he he had a, a copy of the Crow comic book. Now, mm-hmm. This was in, must have been 92, 93, 92, 93. So this was shortly before the Crow movie came out when I was uh, actually exposed to the Crow by J.L. Barr, the comic book. Mm-hmm. I loved it, dude. The story... And the, I'll get you a copy of the comic book. So right. it. But the story in this was awesome. And it honestly wasn't too long before J.O. Barr wrote this that people were trying to pick it up. Yeah. You know, they wanted they wanted to cop, they wanted to buy the rights to make a movie. Now, initially, who was it to release this movie? You know, I don't remember who released it. I'm getting too far ahead of myself. Let's go over some more of the cast real quick. Um, we have Michael Wincott, who plays Top Dollar, the long hair guy. Yeah. Rochelle Davis, who plays Sarah. Yeah. Interesting fact about Sarah. Wait. Sarah? Yeah, Sarah's a little girl, right? Yeah. She's She appears, the same character appears in part two. Really? It's her. It's the same character. She has the little the ring as well that uh, Bruce left her, or Brandon left her. Yeah. Ernie Hudson as, as Officer Albrecht. Bai Ling as Micah. Eileen was looking pretty hot in this movie, I gotta tell you. <laughs> Sophia Shinas as Shelly. Anna Thompson as Darla. Darla the mom. Yep. Then we get down to uh, T-Bird's group of fun friends. David yeah. Patrick Kelly played T-Bird. Angel David played Skank. Lawrence Mason played Tintin. Um, Tony Todd played Grange. John Polito played Gideon. And uh, we'll stop about there. The one yeah. name that I did leave out was Michael Messe. He played Fun Boy. Oh, yeah. And now I left him out for a reason. So I wanted to, I wanted to talk, I wanted to go in and talk about him real quick. Okay. Um, now we all know, anybody that has seen the movie The Crow knows that this movie um, was the movie that Brandon Lee died filming. Yes. Michael Messe was the actual character that uh, accidentally killed him on set while they were making the movie. And That's I know a hell there was, of a weight to take on. I'm telling you. I know there was, a, there was quite a while after this that he didn't act. Um, he wouldn't act anymore. He was done um, because of this experience. I, I know eventually he came back. But mm-hmm. um, wow. Can you imagine being that actor? No. Oh my gosh. I don't want to. He like probably took a lot of shit. Yeah. I mean, it's got, um, I mean, it was an accident. Everybody knows it was an accident because these idiots in Hollywood, instead of, well, we can go over this. I mean, instead of having somebody that is gun knowledgeable mm-hmm. and understands about gun safety, instead of having them as the head person of, um, you know, the, the fire and they still use real firearms. Mm-hmm. Which blows my mind. It's Hollywood. Why are you still using real firearms? Yeah, they can but, make them up. I I'm thought. telling you. But in the, they should have somebody that's gun knowledgeable, that's firearm knowledgeable, to be the person there on set cleaning these, these weapons and making sure that they're clear and ready to be used in a movie. But it's Hollywood. Mm-hmm. It's Hollywood. They have, you know, blue hair, liber, liberal then people in there work in there. They yeah. have no clue. And it's, and it's a perfect example of what happened with that Baldwin recently. Was it Alec? When he accidentally shot somebody on, on set? Mm-hmm. On. If he had somebody there that had any ounce of knowledge about firearms, that never would have happened. And this never would have happened to Brandon Lee. No, wasn't it like a, like a spare shot or something? They're like not... Over armed. time, they use, they use blanks. Yeah, that's what I meant. But if but if you don't clean these these chambers out, these guns out properly, eventually there's buildup. A bunch of gunk builds up, and it's it's gunk residue from you know you spent lead and you know fire powder mm-hmm. and all that gunpowder and all that stuff. It builds up in there. 
So it builds up at the front of the chamber. You put another blank in there, which is just an explosion. That explosion calls all, causes all that gunk and build up at the front to shoot out like a real like a real bullet. Mm-hmm. And that's what happened. Is it? It wasn't like a blank. It was like just a bunch of gunk built yeah, it up. Was, it was a bunch of gunk and a bunch of shit that had built up in the barrel. And when they put the blank in there, the blank fired off like it's supposed to. But by firing off, it shot off that, that gunk in it out of it. All that crap that was in there shut off. And it happens. I mean, it happened. That's supposedly is the same thing that happened to uh, the Baldwin most recently. Oh, really? Ridiculous. I'm telling you. Um, I don't even remember where we were at talking about this movie. I go off in tangents a lot with this movie because I love this movie. Yes. So much. That's okay. This is you a movie that... go off that, on uh, a tangent. I'll meet you there. <laughs> now, this movie, I gotta tell you, this is... This is not a horror movie, per se. It's more of a superhero type of movie. I understand yes. that. I, I do a horror movie podcast. Um, but this month, we are actually doing... We're, we're stepping out of the bounds everywhere. Earlier, I mean, a couple weeks ago, I just did a Prince special. Yes. You know, I did a huge very Prince good. Special. And uh, I got to thank Martina Barnett for joining me on that. And all the people that left their, uh, their stories about Prince. That was spectacular. So I figured since Brandon Lee actually died in the month of April... Why not throw this in there as well? Yeah. You know, because this is a an awesome movie. Oh, it's excellent. Brandon, I love it. Brandon Lee had so much potential going forward. He could have done so much more after this movie. Yes, he could have. But let's talk about the soundtrack of this of this movie. Oh man. <laughs> I had it on like repeat in nineteen ninety four. Dude, this soundtrack. Let me pull this up here real quick. I had it up here. KMF, KMF DMs in there, I think. There's um, the Cure. Now, I told I was, talk, was talking to you about this earlier. When this movie first came out in '94, when they released the soundtrack, I specifically remember that the song "Burn" was attributed to Robert Smith, not the Cure. Mm-hmm. And I specifically remember that because I'm like, oh, did he go solo? I, I remember thinking that. But mm -hmm. now, when you buy the CD or the soundtrack, however you buy it, it contributes burn to The Cure. Mm-hmm. Oh, ah, to me. But there's Stone Temple Pilots, Rage Against the Machine, The Rollins Band, uh, Machines of Love, and Nine Inch Nails. Nails. The Violent yes. Femmes. Um, Helmet. Who else is in here? Pantera. Yeah. I mean, the Jesus Mary Chain. There was so many. This soundtrack on this. It's spectacular. I mean, yep. I, I, I want to listen to it right now, to tell you the truth. <laughs> it's like, yep. I want to get off here and listen to the soundtrack. Because this soundtrack is spectacular. Yes. And from from the beginning, I think that the, the real first song we hear is Burn. Yes. You know, we, play, we hear a little bit of instrumental stuff in the background beforehand. But the first big, real song that we hear is Burn by The Cure. Yep. And this is after he realizes why he's back, you know, what he's supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, after he paints his face and everything, uh, they play that song, and it's just like, it. they play it at the right moment because you're like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, let's get this on, baby. Yeah, get on. yeah, it did. It was, it was ready to, like, get out there and kick some ass. Yep. Now, it's, it's a little odd tonight. I'm actually drinking beer tonight instead of moonshine. Why is that? Hot Bullet by Sierra Nevada. It's an Imperial IP. I don't know. I was like, I've been drinking moonshine for every night for. Does and it I got taste it all, okay? Yeah, it's decent. It's beer, you know. But I mean, coming up, I have this weekend to drink, and coming up Monday, I can't drink for two weeks. So it's kind of like, mm, let's get it all in now. Yeah. Got to take this damn medication for a kidney stone. It's my doctor says I wouldn't advise you drinking while you're taking this medication because it lowers your blood pressure. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I got yeah. my blood pressure is already high. So, if I drink while I'm taking this medication, wouldn't lowering it be good? Yeah. He didn't think that was funny, but oh well. <laughs> Back to the movie. The Crow. Christine, what what is your most memorable uh, part of this movie? Memorable scene? The whole, if you, if you look at the whole part. thing, what is the most memorable thing to you about this movie? I mean, do we have, 
the acting by Brandon Lee, the story that it actually tells. Um, I mean, you know, actually, the story that it tells, like, true love never dies. That's, and vengeance, that's awesome. Vengeance sucks. But yes. those at the end of the sword, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. Now, there's some. There's a whole bunch of trivia on this. I'm looking at the IMDb for trivia. Uh, the first one here says, in the Blu-ray commentary, Alex Proyos said that Brandon Lee was unhappy with the way his face paint looked when the makeup department applied it to him before shooting. Mm-hmm. Lee and Proyos then agreed that it would be best if Lee applied his own makeup every night before going to bed so that way, when he woke up, his face paint would be naturally look worn out. Wow. So I, from what it appears is that they originally had a very, very white and very, very black, like like Sting. Mm-hmm. And Brandon was, I don't like that. But if you notice in the movie now, every time they show his paint in his face, it's kind of worn out. Yeah. It's not white and standing out. Whew, had a burp. Would you do that? Would I think you so. Put, you, you would put makeup on your face, like every... Well, right. if I was going to be in that type of movie, absolutely. Absolutely. Now, there was one thing. I've, I've met J.O. Barr before. And, you know, I've watched commentary about him with um, how the rights were bought and everything with Crow. Originally, the company that bought the Crow, the rights to the Crow, wanted something. Com- I think that J.O. Barr even said they wanted to make a musical out of it. And they wanted to have, like, Johnny Depp or somebody else in there like that. A musical? And he was like, no. But he had already sold the rights, so he didn't really have much say in it. But the saving grace, there was two people that saved this movie. And that was the director, Alex Prios and Brandon Lee. Because they refused to make a movie, this movie unless they could stick more true to the actual comic. Mm-hmm. And anybody, anybody out there in Marvel and DC land that wants to know how to make a good movie that people are going to love, that stays true to this actual storyline, watch this movie. movie. Because once you read the comic, there are so many things that are direct representations in this movie from the comic. Direct. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, there's lines, um, there's actions, the things that he, the whole thing he says about, you know, mother is the, the word for God, God, the name for God. That's in the comic book. That whole joke about, Hey, Jesus walked into a bar with three nails. That is in the comic. I mean, it is spectacular. The only thing that goes a little bit stray is the very end fight scene. It's different. It's different. Yeah, but this movie could really tell modern Marvel and DC movies how to make a comic accurate movie. Yes. Because they did a great job. And and that is owed in large part to the Alex Proyos and Brandon Lee. Mm -hmm. It wasn't for them. We have Johnny Depp musical, The Crow. Yeah, and yeah, we it. don't know what that would turn like. I can imagine. <laughs> I can imagine. I don't want to. <laughs> now, Jail Bar. Actually, no. If they had, like, um, like you know, Robert Smith out there, that's not going to happen, of course. But, it, you know, if they had, like, the... Um, soundtrack of the people I would I might go see it oh yeah now there has been a 30th anniversary I gotta I gotta post pop this up here real quick um a 30th anniversary of where's it at here we go of this movie that's been released it's a limited edition 4k ultra HD steelbook oh wow it comes with so much you can get it on Amazon was a bit, I, I think initially it was like a, a Walmart exclusive, but it was so huge that everybody wanted it. You can look that up. Awesome. Try and get that because if you can, I'm about to order mine right now to tell you the truth. <laughs> Want this. What, is it, what is it pricing at right now? Mm, yeah, it's not bad. 30 bucks. That's not bad at all for that. Yeah, I bet it um Now, in, in this movie, you know, we see that, that this is dedicated to Brandon and Eliza. Um, did it, did it, the dedication at the start of the end credits was for Brandon Lee, who was accidentally killed in a production of this movie, of which we discussed. Um, and his fiance Eliza, who supported Alex Proyos in in his de- decision to complete the movie after Brandon died, mm-hmm. um, because they didn't have to. I gotta, I gotta tell you, 
if they had decided not to complete the movie after he died, I think the world would be a less place, less worthy of a place to live in. Yeah. This movie has done such great in filmmaking, storytelling, you know, the acting, everything in this. It should have got an Oscar. Yeah, well. It's look, not one of those Oscar-worthy Oscars. movies, though. Fuck the Oscars. Yeah. Fuck the Oscars. <laughs> yeah, so although he was not at fault for his death of Brandon Lee, Michael Massey stopped acting for a year because he was so traumatized uh, by the incident. Oh, my God. Wouldn't you? Oh. That's horrible. Yeah. I mean, you, you killed the next upcoming star. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, there's been so much stuff. Let me see. There's so many. Brandon Lee lost 40 pounds for this role. He did look kind of skinny in this. Yeah. Now, one thing that I learned, and I learned this from a friend of mine, Marilyn, uh, who has who owns Get Under My Skin uh, clothing. She does all this stuff, clothing. She makes all this cool stuff. But I never knew that the actual filming where Brandon Lee died was in Wilmington, North Carolina. North Carolina. So I work in Wilmington quite often. So the last time I was there, I was looking up to try and see if I could visit the set or the property yeah. of what happened. They're having none of it. They're like, no, no, can't do it. Sorry. That sucks. I'm like, fuck you. <laughs> yeah. That's what I told them. You know. They don't think or stop. Whoa, whoa. Um, let me see if there's any other worthy trivia. There's a whole bunch of trivia, but I don't want to go through it all. Hmm. The phrase, it can't rain all the time, is inspired by an encounter that writer James O'Barr had as a teen. While living in Shepherd, Michigan, prior to enlisting in the Marines, the down-on-his-luck J.O. Barr found himself unable to pay for groceries. Frustrated, he decided to buy just the rice, to which the man in line behind him stated, you can't eat rice all the time. While paying for J.O. Barr's groceries, the man turned out to be Lee Coughlin. The mayor of Shepard himself and is also the basis of the character Albrecht. Albrecht is both the character Albrecht is in the comic book and in the movie as well. So that's awesome. Um, wow. J.O. Barr modeled comic book Eric's face on an animal gang of Ian Curtis's and ja Daniel Ash. Iggy Pop served as a model for the yeah, the body. When you when you look at the comic book, you know who Iggy Pop is? Of course. Yeah. Everyone knows who Iggy Pop is. When of you look course at old, I know who Iggy Pop yeah. is. When you look at old Iggy Pop, I mean older from like 90s, 80s, 90s, and you look at the comic book, the body style, it's exactly the same. I mean, that's Iggy Pop's body on the crow in the comic book. Well, that's it's weird. Exactly. <laughs> um, I mean, I can't say enough of this mo- about this movie. You know, I can go through the trivia here left and right, eh, but a whole bunch of different stuff. Sure what I want to really want to get across is this movie was lightning in a bottle. Yes, I agree. You know, this was up until this point, we didn't have superhero movies like like we know of, of them today. Mm-hmm. Now, what is Eric Draven really a superhero? Mm. Um, yeah. Well, Kinda. I don't know if he's a superhero. I mean, he is. Is he a no. hero, though, is a thing. He's a hero, but he's not he's a superhero. Like, he's not out there, like, helping everybody I else. I see him more like, um, like Ghost Rider. Yeah. You know, he's here to wreak vengeance for what has, somebody that has done him wrong. He's telling me my hat was all crooked. You know? I didn't know. I didn't see it. Creepers, creepers, girl. Welcome to the shit show, by the way. I'm the shit show supervisor. FYI. Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the shit show. Yeah, yeah, that's our uh, Friday night live streams over at the Moonshine Militia called The Shit Show. Okay. Check it out sometime. I think one time you popped in there for a minute. Yeah. Um, Boy, go on. Let's trivia. I don't want to do more, more trivia. I really don't. Christine, movie The Crow. How much do you like this movie? I don't just like this movie. I love this movie. This is like one of my favorite movies of all time. It really, really is. I mean, and I can, I can say, honestly, for me, outside of horror, because it's not a horror movie, we established it's not a horror movie. No. This has to be one of my favorite movies outside of horror ever made. Yes. Ever made. Um, I love it. And I, I have, like I told you earlier, I think, I honestly think, honestly think that I have seen this movie no less than 150 times. 
And I mean, I watch it all the time. I, I've tried to get my kids to watch it, but there's, you know, there's parts in the movie. You're kind of like, eh. yeah, they're iffy about, yeah. Yeah. They still boob. The kids. I boob the whole boob thing. Yeah. Um, and that's the only real big thing, honestly, is the boob scene. Well, the rape scene that you don't want them no. to see that either. You gotta, you gotta see what happens to know why it happens at the end. Yeah. And, and that rape scene is not graphic. No, it's not. You know, they basically so show, you know, like fun boy, like, oh, I'm going to have fun. Yeah. And they show Billy screaming, being dragged on the floor. But they don't, it's not graphic. So it's not really out of base for, you know, somebody younger to watch. Because yeah. they're not really actually seeing that. The only real thing, I mean, as far as the violence and the blood and the gore goes, you see that shit on YouTube nowadays. Yeah. You no. Know? So look at that. Who's that? But anyway, he wants more time in the PS5. Okay. Of course. Um, of course. It's the computer okay. age. You know I'm telling you, I fucking hate it. <laughs> hate it. Anyway. I bet. You know what? We, we were we were talking earlier um, about the remake that's coming up. Now, an interesting thing. When I met J.O. Bar, hold on, let me grab something real quick. Okay. I hit my hat. It's all fucking crooked again. Oh, no. Shit on me. See, when I met J.O. Bar, I had him sign this for me. Oh, that's awesome. You know, it's a deluxe action figure. It's got Eric Draven in there, and he died. You see, he drew the little crow on there. Yeah. And an interesting thing when I talked to him, because there was already talks at that time about them making a remake of The Crow. Starring Skarsgård. Is it Bill, right? Bill Skarsgård? Yes, Skarsgård? I think. Yeah. One of them. I one guess. of the Skarsgårds. It's playing. the one that plays Pennywise. The new Pennywise. Yeah. And an interesting thing that J.L. Barr told me. Now, keep in mind, when they were making this original Crow from 1994, J.L. Barr was on set all the time. Really? He was there with Brandon Lee... And with the director, Alex, you know, they were going through how to make this more real to J.O. Barr's vision. So he he became very close to Brandon Lee. Mm-hmm. So when Brandon Lee's death, when it happened, it hit him hard. Um, an interesting thing, though, when I talked to J.O. Barr and I asked him about the upcoming Crow remake, he said, I have no input on that because the studio has never contacted me one time about having any involvement in this in the making of this movie. Now that is ridiculous. Now how much of a spit in the face is that? That's like Now they don't have to because they own the rights. Fine. Legalities. But still. But come on. Yeah, man. You that's know the guy who created it. I'm telling you. And you're not you know gonna what? let him be a part of the movie that he created. <laughs> Real quick, while we're on here, we're gonna watch the the trailer for the upcoming crow. Okay. What's the first thing you liked about me? I thought that you were quite brilliantly broken. You feel like my person? (laughs) You feel like my person. What's the worst thing you've ever done? I saw things. I shouldn't have seen any of them. When someone dies, a crow carries their soul to the land of the dead. But sometimes something so bad happens that the soul cannot rest. Until you put the wrong things right. You were given the power of a god. But you're running out of time to save her. I'm gonna kill them. Every single one of them. I'm 
killed you. Yeah, he did. We have a problem. He came for us. First impulse. Anger. It's not anger. It's love. Look at what you've become. You know that love promises only pain. You have no idea what hell awaits you. No, I do. How many people have you loved? I'll never be alone. I don't know about that. Okay, Christine. So, <laughs> initial thoughts. I don't know about that. Initial thoughts on the remake of The Crow. Before, before I go into it, I want to hear what you have to think about it first. Um, there's so many things wrong with it. And to answer your earlier question, you asked me earlier that if it was Eric Draven, yeah, it is. They use the same character. See, that? that's ridiculous. Now, if we look back at the way that um, Shelley dies, that Eric dies, even in the, the Brandon Lee version of The Crow, it's different from the comic book. Because mm-hmm. in the comic book, um, they're, car- they're basically carjacked, and that's how they die. Yeah. Um, but in the, you know, in the Brandon Lee version, they changed it. You know, it made it more dramatic and everything like that. That's fine. It kind of looked ghoulish, too. Like, when he went down into the water, like, the black came out of his out of his eyes. Did you see that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That was it, stupid. You know, I think that I think that delving into delving into the mythos of the crow bringing the dead back for vengeance is fine. Mm-hmm. It's awesome. You can do that. In the comic books, there wasn't just one crow. Eric Draven was the first one. I know. I was getting ready to say that. The comic, the comic book line went on for quite a while, and there was many people that came back as the crow. Why in the hell would they choose the original Eric crow, or Eric Draven to remake? Because he was the one that was so successful. I mean, I don't know how the crow, too, um, and how, like, all those did. But I mean, they're decent. I mean, they're not they're not this movie, but they're not terrible. I mean, there's a lot of people out there that rag on the Crow two and three and even four and even the the, the Crow series starring Mark Dacascus that was on TV for a while. Um, I enjoyed those. They're not like I said, they're not at the level of this the, the original Crow from 1994. But let me tell you what I think about this remake. First of all, I think is a spit in the face to the legacy of Brandon Lee. Point blank. Yes, I can agree with that. He died making one of the best movies of all time. His fiance at the time backed the the director to finish the movie. That was his legacy. Mm -hmm. Why would you choose to remake a movie, reboot a movie, whatever the fuck you want to call it, based off that same character? To spit in the face to Brandon Lee and to his family and to his legacy, in my opinion. Now, like I said earlier, there was many, many, many characters that came out and played the crow. They could have yeah. chosen any one of those other ones. Why did they choose carry on the crow? And Skarsgård's not a bad actor. I don't, I, I don't want, I don't want to, I don't want to besmirch him. He's a, he's a good actor. Yeah. But I don't think that uh, I don't know. I would like to see an interview with him to see how how involved he was with the background, knowing the background of what this actually means. I can tell you, anybody that goes to watch this, I'm going to watch this movie when it comes out. Make no mistake about it. And I'm going to make a podcast about it, tearing it apart. Yeah. That's all it's going to be. Um, <laughs> because to me, it's just ridiculous how you can, how you can, you can attempt to destroy a man's legacy. Did you say died. earlier? He, sp- he, he spilled blood and died for this movie. Yes. I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what else to say about it. I really don't. Um, I think that they could have done very well by using a different character to play the crow. 
uh, besides Eric Draven. Yeah, they could have. Because but, but. it's always about, the story is always about true love never dies. Mm-hmm. You know, somebody that dies um, when they shouldn't have, that's the ven- vengeance. The crow brings them back to, to make things right. Mm-hmm. There's all kinds of stories out there, baby. All kinds of stories they could have chose. They didn't have to. Well, this one was like, I guess, the most popular and the most um, watched. People loved this movie. They could have very easily. Yeah, I don't. I've already I've already said it a hundred times. They could have very easily chosen a different crow. People know the name of the crow. Yes. They know that name. Yes. Um, And the people that don't know the name, this is the thing. The people that do know the name of the crow, they uh, they know the comic book, and they know the Brandon Lee version of the crow. The people that do not know the name of the crow, well, you could have chosen any kind, of, any 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 fuck sucking sorted story out there to tell, mm-hmm. because they had no idea what the crow was, and they would have bought into it. Yeah, and I don't understand, and I understand. You know, I have a small horror movie podcast. None of these none of these fuck sticks at the. Who actually made the new Crow? Crow 2024. Because it's coming out this year. Um, you know, stars Bill Skarsgård, FTA Twigs, and Shelley Webster. We should wow. um, watch this together and break it apart. Together. Well, I'm, I'm going to go see it at the theater. But then when it comes out on streaming, I'll, I'll get it on here and we'll do that. Um, the director of this is Rupert, Rupert Sanders. Rupert it even has... It even, and IMDb, it has James O'Barr written as one as one of the writers, which is from from what I understand from talking to James O'Barr, the only thing that he has contributed to this is the names, the Crow and Eric Draven. So this guy that made the, is making this new Crow made the Ghost in the Shell, Snow White and the Huntsman. Okay. Uh, really, that's noteworthy. I just don't understand why they would try and remake something that was already good. Right. You know, and they're doing that more and more because Hollywood is out of original ideas that's true so they're reaching back to the shit that was good and they're trying to remake it yeah for a new new audience or reboot it or whatever the mm-hmm. hell they want to say it is but it's terrible now Skarsgård's haircut he's got a mullet yeah you know it, when, you, when you see the original comic book the crow's hair was I mean it was long and straggly, kind of like Brandon Lee's, maybe a little yeah. bit shorter, but kind of like Brandon Lee's. It was not a fucking mullet. I'll tell you that right no. now. And, you know, the fact that now they are they are putting the crow up against, it looks like some big corporate conglomerate that is the enemy. When the original story was about, it was small. It was about local thugs and, and gangs and stuff like that. Do you know why, do you know why J.L. Barr wrote this, wrote this comic? Uh... Maybe to let everybody what was happening know what was now, happening. Shortly before this, Gail Barr was was a quiet person that kept himself was pretty much uh, an inclusive, you know, what do they call it a recluse or whatever. He didn't he didn't go out and he didn't have a lot of friends, but he had a girlfriend. And his girlfriend was killed in a car accident. Oh my god! Which is the reason why in the original Crow comic book, Eric Draven and Shelley Webster die in a in, in a car. Related incident. Mm-hmm. Um, he was so distraught over this because she was his everything. They had plans to get married and everything, but uh, when she died, went to a great, de- a huge depression. I mean, who could blame him? The guy, the guy, right? I mean, come on. Yeah. But he created this character, the Crow, Eric Draven, and this is how he he released his emotions. He released them onto the pages of this comic book. Everything that happened to the bad people in this comic book were things that he wanted to happen to people that had done what had happened to him and his girlfriend. So you fast forward to this, The Crow 2024, you have some big conglomerate corporation that's the big bad guy. Eh, It doesn't really hit home. To me, it doesn't. Anyway, I don't know. What do you think? What about um, him making this for his wife or... She was no, his about, girlfriend, about right? The, the, the big conglomerate being the big bad guy in this, the big corporate, instead probably, of the local thugs. Probably they're, you know, they're in a lot of, their fingers are in a lot of pies out there. I think that they're trying to make a 
political social statement. Do that, you really? With yeah, movie? I do. I think they're trying to say that um, the remake, not yeah. the original, the remake. Yeah. They're trying to say that these big corporations are evil and they need to be taken down. Now, that's, that's just what I'm getting from the trailer. I could be completely wrong about the big corporation being the bad guy once we see the movie. I could be wrong. But from the trailer, it seems like they're trying to make these big, huge corporations the bad guy. Mm-hmm. That's a political statement for what's going on in the world today. Yeah, that's... It's very, very, very... stupid. Um, <laughs> stupid. When the, the original, you know, and, and they keep on with the love never dies kind of thing. And that's good. But the original movie was truly about love never dies. That's true. <laughs> that's what makes it so great. You know, you can, you can watch this movie and you can hope and you can wish... Man, someday I wish I could meet somebody that felt this way about me or that yes. I could feel some, feel this way about somebody else. Yes. And what would I do? What would I do if somebody I loved like that was wronged? I mean, you put these are the things you put in perspective. While you're watching this movie, you think about these things. You're like, uh-huh. wow. Now, when I first watched this movie, I didn't think about all this stuff. It wasn't, it wasn't until much later on, but I'm, you know, it's, it, it's, it's a love story. But it's also a story of vengeance. Uh-huh. And who does not love a good story about vengeance? I love a good story you know? about vengeance. Those motherfuckers, they get what they deserve. They do. It's, they, that's it's awesome. Spectacular. But that's pretty much it. I mean, that's, I mean, I love the 1994 Crow with Brandon Lee. I love it. It's one of my all time favorite movies. I have Blu-rays. I have. I'm getting this uh, this this anniversary set that came out. It it's up there in horror movies as you know the Evil Dead franchise. Uh-huh. But because this is not a horror movie, it holds that same level for me on on a different on a different genre. You know. Yeah. I will continue to watch this movie multiple times a year, and eventually, when I get my kids to sit down and watch it, they're going to watch it too. Absolutely. What say you, watch it. I should have let uh, Gavin watch this movie. I don't know why he never did. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna message when we get off here. I'm gonna message Gavin and ask him if he's seen The Crow. If he says not no, then I'm gonna message CJ. And I'm gonna ask him why he never showed. Yeah, Gavin The Crow. If he's you got failed. some shitty excuse, you I'm failed. gonna go down and I'm gonna smack him. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna smack him. You failed, CJ. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Uh, he did make him, he is a UF fan, so eh, well, he's a Gator. Hey, so I, you know what? It's on me, though, too. Honestly. I'm, his, no. I'm Gavin's mother. I probably should have showed him. But he's the dad. So what? He's supposed to show him manly stuff, like vengeance for the one you love. <laughs> but that's that's all. That's all, pretty much all I have to say about the rest of this movie. I mean, I think that the, the remake coming out is going to be shit. It's going to be a shit show. And <laughs> I'm going to cover it. I'm going to watch it and I'm going to cover it. But anybody out there that has never seen The Crow from 1994, you're an idiot. Go watch it because watch you can find it, it everywhere. It's it, I think it's even free on Tubi right now. So you have no excuse. This movie is spectacular. It's a spectacular movie. Brandon Lee plays. I mean, he died making this movie. Yes, it's his legacy. It is very much his legacy. Christine, what are your final thoughts on the movie, The Crow or the remake or both? Whatever you want to say. I'm not looking forward to the remake, but the Crow, the 1994 Crow was awesome. I mean, it was like really, 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 really good. So Hmm. I think everybody should watch it. Everybody should watch it and introduce their kids to it. Yes. So it just keeps going on and on and they don't think of the shit show Crow as like the Crow. It's just like when, um, you know, the Karate Kid came out, the new Karate Kid with... Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, with, that uh, Yeah, I know that. I didn't... Now, about that, I didn't like the remake with... Uh, what's the I guy's name? Either. I didn't either. I didn't remember his name. Jackie Chan. Jackie Chan. Was it Jackie Chan that did yeah. it? Yeah, Jackie Chan's in it. And uh, what's the uh, Men in Black guy? Is it... Will Smith's son, Jayden? Yeah, Will Smith's son. That's right. He played in it. Now, when I first saw that, I didn't like it. I was just like, no. This is not the no. Karate Kid. 
at all. No. But uh, I've been watching the Cobra Kai series. It's a good series. And the next series, the next season, they're actually tying in Jackie Chan and that whole storyline in with Mr. Miyagi and the Cobra Kai. And How Miyagi the Day. hell are they going to do that? I have no idea, but they're doing it. <laughs> I don't know why they're doing it. And because they're doing it, I'm going to give it another chance because they're tying it into the actual canon of the Karate Kid. I'll give it another chance. Would you? So uh, Jackie Chan knows uh, Miyagi Do. I don't know how it's going to work out, honestly. Um, <laughs> I, mean, I have no idea how it's going to work out. That's like where I would see it was <laughs> would be going, you know? I don't know. Uh, we'll find out whenever it comes out, but I'm going to give it another chance. I'm going to depend, depending on how this season goes, I'll go back and rewatch the other credit. I think I have it on my Plex server on the Karate Kid too. I think I have that one included um, on there as well with one with Jackie Chan and Jaden Smith. Depending on how this next season goes, I'll give it another chance. We'll see. Yeah. We shall see. Christine, <laughs> I want to thank you very much for joining me on this journey through the crow. And all things great that had to do with Brandon Lee's version of The Crow. All of things are going to be shitty coming out with this Skarsgård version of The Crow. Yeah. Thank you. We're going to tear that movie apart together, you and I. You know what? You know what the bad thing is? What if we go watch it and we're like, holy shit, this is actually a good movie. I don't know. I don't. Just for the simple fact that they're spitting on Brandon Lee's legacy, I don't think I'm going to agree with it too much. But No. But, you know, we'll see. We'll have fun. We will have fun. Yes. That's it. That's it for this episode of Guess What You're Wrong. Everybody out there, sweet dreams. Love, peace, and chicken grease. Chicken grease, baby. And that's going to do it for the day. Thanks for hanging out with me and letting me bend your ear for a while. Ain't no time for bad shine. (laughs) And until next time, don't forget... You're wrong. (laughs) Later, Tater. This concludes our broadcast day. Good night, and God bless America.